Before I begin the next step of the tutorial, I wanted to clarify a few things from the last step. I didn't feel like I explained it terribly well, so I wanted to kind of say a few more words on that. The first would be drawing of the circles, and what I was talking about with like the make your own compass type of thing. Again, basically what I've done is I've taken one pencil. Uh, this could also be a nail or something that's just going to mark your center. That's going to be your center of your radius. Um, and I've tied a piece of string to it. And I've made it loose enough so I can spin it around without, you know, it, it won't roll up like that. It's basically and just pivot around the pencil. And then you've got a second pencil or some way of marking the actual circle. So this needs to be, you know, this can be relatively blunt or whatever, but this has to be uh, sharp. This is your marking pencil. And all you're going to do is, like I said, is kind of, for me, I just give it a few twists. You can make the appropriate length of string and then tie a knot on this pencil as well. But all I do is I just kind of pull it to the length I want and then just wrap it around a few times. And that keeps it there fairly well. And I'm holding it with my fingers while I work. But this is essentially what you have to do. And you just come over to your space. You put your one pencil right in the middle and pulled your other pencil right out to the radius that you want and making sure that that's always taut, this, that this line is taut all the way, so you kind of have to pull away from the center as well as mark out the circle itself. And that's how I do the large circle, and the little circle in this case. The other thing I wanted to make mention of was the, uh, the measurements for the center for the shield boss, this hole right here. What I've done for this is I've made it six inches, and that is for two reasons. One, I need at least a four and a half inch grip for just my hand my hand width. Plus I also wanted to, you know, assume that I had a glove on or something, so I wanted a little bit more space than that to make it more comfortable. But I decided also on six because that would give me enough room, but also be smaller than the piece of metal I'm using. You can see here I'm using, this is actually aluminum, uh, 25 gauge. Uh, it's just regular aluminum. You can buy it like a tractor supply or something. But this is eight inch, this is an eight inch sheet, eight inch wide by 24 and so clearly I can't make the boss the shield boss hole larger than the width of my sheet so if you had a larger sheet you can make a larger shield boss but for me I had to make it about six was my max because I wanted to have an inch all the way around the shield boss with which I could attach to the shield so those are two things I just wanted to make sure that you know about especially the size of the, sh the shield boss so that you can kind of size your own uh, for your hand. Like I said, six was the max I could get for a diameter, uh, but that would also fit my hand. So I have a four and a half inch grip plus some, uh, so it has a little bit of extra room, but it's still uh, small enough of a circle that I will be able to attach the shield boss with the size metal that I have. Uh, if you're going to make it out of wood, your boss out of wood, then it's really not that important. You can make it a little bit bigger and then just make your wooden dome um, bigger as well. So those are the two things I wanted to go over before diving into the next part of the tutorial. So our next step on this shield is to create and attach some support strips to go across the, the planks here. I'm doing this now instead of cutting out the circle first because I wanted some support to go across these glue joints. A simple glued butt joint is one of the weakest joints you can have and I didn't want, you know, just by working on it to split the shield along the joints and break that glue joint. So yeah, while I'm working on it, I wanted to have some, some better strength than what it has now. So I'm going to do this before I cut, which can be a pretty jarring process if you're using like a reciprocating blade, like a jigsaw or a saber saw or something like that, scroll saw, anything that moves up and down, uh, you're jarring the piece kind of as you work. So I just wanted to make sure that it was strong enough to last through the cutting process without, you know, creating more work for myself. But as far as the actual support pieces go, I used pieces of pine that were 3 quarters inch wide by about 3 eighths thick. Uh, you could do 5 sixteenths. I wouldn't go all the way down to a quarter of an inch, but these were just cut offs from another project. Something I had to hide lying around. And these are 24 and a half inches long from point to point. Um, I cut the corners off to have a little bit more clearance around the edge of the shield. But, so if you're making a 30 inch shield, you can definitely make these same sizes. Like I said, 24 and a half inches long, uh, 3 quarters wide, and 3 eighths thick. 
And as far as placement goes, I was really trying to push it as far away from center as I could, but still hit every single plank. Um, so I would have something that spanned all and uh, tied all of these planks together. So what I arrived at was six inches from center of the shield out is this inside edge. So six from, you know, from the very center to the inside edge is going to be six inches. And then keep your reveals top and bottom even. I think this is inch and a quarter from the point to the edge of the shield. So make that the same top and bottom. Again, the reason why you want to push it out as far as possible is because three supports right next to each other, definitely not as effective as, you know, pushing the supports, you know, a support way out here would be awesome, but it would only be awesome for these four boards, and I wouldn't be able to hit the, uh, you know, the top and the bottom board. So that's the reason for the placement, uh, but you could kind of put it anywhere, and you'll have to change those dimensions if you go with something other than a 30-inch shield. Uh, if you have a bigger shield, you can probably push them out further. But that's pretty much it. Uh, as far as cutting goes, um, like I said, these were just pieces that I had cut out already. But as far as cutting out the circle, uh, I would recommend using something like a bandsaw uh, along this outside edge, or a jigsaw or a saber saw, as they're also called. Uh, that's probably your easiest way of doing this. You could use a handsaw. Um, I'm actually going to be using a circular saw to make straight cuts across these corners to kind of, you know, so I'll have some rough edges, of course, some pieces that are still poking out, but I'm going to clean those up with a power sander. And that's because my saber saw right now is not, is acting up. So rather than wait, I'm just going to go ahead and do it a rough and dirty way. But for the center hole, you're definitely going to want to use a jigsaw or a saber saw. It's going to be your best bet. Just drill a hole right in the middle and run your jigsaw around in the circle and you're all set pretty easy so however you get it done uh, just attach these these are just glued right now I may have to come back later and drill some holes and put some nails through and uh, pin them over or bend them over and that will you know add a little bit of extra support I'm gonna see how it goes with just glued and same on this one of course you still have to glue it down but once you have attached those and cut out the circle uh, the next step that we're going to move on to is creating a center handle, which is also our center support. 